that life is God's life and that life is my life now. So please know with me, I am life. We light a candle for love. The birth of love happens within each one of us every time we make room for the Christ consciousness in our hearts and in our lives. We are transformed. I am a point of love within the heart of God. Please know with me, I am love. We light a candle for light. The light of God is the presence and power. We are always walking in the light. We radiate the light of God wherever we are. So please know with me, I am light. We light a candle for beauty. We are made in the likeness and image of God. We are each whole, complete, perfect, and beautiful, just as we are. We accept the beauty of God's perfection in us now. Please know with me, I am beauty. We light a candle for joy. Joy is the very nature of spirit and the true essence of each of us. We celebrate the joy of our own rebirth in the God consciousness. Please know with me, I am joy. We light a candle for peace. Today and every day, we open our hearts to peace. We are each a center of peace for our world. Please know with me, I am peace. And finally, I'd like to invite you to join me in taking a moment to recognize our own inner light, that light that is always shining within us as we honor our own metaphysical path of wholeness, oneness, and mental healing through the practice of universal spiritual principles. And so, Thank you, thank you, Verla. So time for announcements. If this is your first visit to our center, welcome. Please sign our guest book in the lobby. Uh, that will put you on our email list. We only send out one email a week. It just has the information on what's happening and uh, meditation and affirmation information. So, um, and there's a welcome packet out there too for you. And please know that you're invited to stay with us for fellowship. And if you want, um, we have a workshop today. You can stay for that too. So every Sunday we offer spiritual mind treatment as our gift to you. So if you have a prayer request today, you can either see one of us myself, Reverend Maureen, practitioner Robert, after the service today, or you could fill out a written request and put it in the box on the table in the lobby, and then we will do treatment for you during the week. I want to remind you, because sometimes I don't think, people might think they only get one shot to put a treatment request on. No, we keep the treatment up. So if you put in a treatment request last week, and something is still ongoing, you can do it again, or you can see us one-on-one. -on -one. We do believe that treatment brings results. Even if they're not always instantaneous, we can be persistent and expect good. So in your program, you will see the announcements. You can read them if you'd like. But I want to make sure everyone knows that today, um, after fellowship, Reverend Maureen will be hosting a workshop on love and nurturing intimacy uh, right in this room. And everyone is invited to stay and participate. It might be a little shorter because of Super Bowl, but if, you know, if you're in a hurry because you're in charge, you can at least stop by and pick up the materials to take home with you. The other important thing is next week is Potluck Sunday. So if you can bring a dish to share, it's always fun. And then um, I 
want to just remind you that we have a book table out there. And of course, most of the books are just long lasting. You can get them every week. But every month, we do get a few copies in of the Science of Mind magazine. So we have some that are available in the bookstore. Um, and you might like to take a look at them. Um, I think it's a great place to kind of get inspiration every day. So then the last and most important announcement always is um, that we want to say thank you to all our volunteers because this is a community-based spiritual center and we rely on our team of volunteers to keep everything going. So we have some volunteers that you see come up on stage like for a love. And then we have the behind the scenes volunteers. So let's give Morgan appreciation for the beautiful flowers. Um, Jan Green for being our greeter today. Jan um, Sherburn, who we always thank for setting up and running the bookstore. We also, today she brought the treats, some beautiful little Valentine's cookies out there. So, thank you so much. And practitioner Robert is doing the video recording today. Well, Lily recovers from his pickleball. <laughs> and uh, yeah, and I also want to thank Angela for coming early and setting up, and he's going to be come later and breaking down. So it's really, really nice to have so much support. If anyone wants to become a volunteer, the sign-up sheet is right on the welcome table. So now, if you could, I'd like to invite you to look inside your program, and on the right-hand side, find the group reading. And let's read it together. God is all, both visible and invisible. One presence, one mind, one power is all. This one that is all is perfect love and perfect abundance. I am on individualized expression of God. I am ever one with this perfect life, perfect love, and perfect abundance. And now I'm going to turn it over to our musicians again. So right. So stand up, and um, this is a song we've done before many times. Actually, it's called "A Light in This World." So I'm a light. I'm a light. I'm a light in this world, and I shine and I shine and I shine so bright. You'll catch on real quick.
know. You have so much light in there. <laughs> Very nice. A plus. <laughs> Not that anyone's judging. <laughs> okay, now I'd like to invite Melissa up to give us the inspirational reading for today. Right. Hi, remember the microphone this time. <laughs> you shine. You shine. You all shine. Yeah. And you're shining in the light of love absolutely right now. And this is what our focus is. It's about love and shining in the light of love, basically. And Edward Edlin Cummings, who is also known as E.E. E. Cummings, he was born in 1894, and he was an American painter, poet, essayist, author, and playwright. And he wrote approximately 2,900 poems, two autobiographical novels, four plays, and several essays. And many, many times, most of the time, his focus truly was on love. Cummings experimented with poetic form and language to create a distinct personal style. By the time of his death in 1962, Cummings held a prominent position in 20th century poetry as one of the greatest lyric poets of his time. And in his poem called Love, he not only expresses the love of a person, but love of itself, its quality, its value, its feel, its meaning equal to such concepts as joy, growth, and the concept of love as God. And now, Love by E.E. E. Cummings. I carry your heart with me. I carry it in my heart. I am never without it. Anywhere I go, you go. And whatever is done by only me, is your doing. I fear no fate, for you are my fate. I want no world, for you are my world. Whatever a moon has meant is you, and whatever sunlight will shine is you. This is the deepest secret. Here is the root of the root, and the bud of the bud and the sky, the sky of a tree called life, which grows higher than the soul can hope or mind can hide. And this is the wonder that's keeping the stars in alignment. I carry your heart, and I carry it in my heart. And so it is. Well, since this is the month of love, well, we should have all months of love, right? Yeah. But uh, especially this month, I guess. And uh, we're going to do... Too bad so short. Yeah, I know. <laughs> 28 days, what? We got chips. <laughs> <laughs> and once in a while, 29 days. Yeah, once in a while. <laughs> anyway. Um, so this is a song that Elton John recorded on his very first album. And it's not his own song. One of the very is, few songs he didn't write. Exactly. That he recorded. He exactly. felt it was worthy of recording. Exactly. It's called A Love Song. And it's by Leslie Duncan. Sandy Duncan is the one who was the perky person in Peter Pan. Um, <laughs> no <laughs> um, relation so, that we know of. Yeah, Leslie Duncan. Leslie Duncan wrote the song. Uh, just beautiful. And you can uh, definitely sing along if you'd like to.
It's beautiful, thank you. Well, now I would like to um, welcome, have you help me welcome Reverend Maureen up. She's got a special message for us today. Good morning, good morning. How's the sound? Good morning. Okay, good morning. Welcome. Uh, for some of you who don't meet, Reverend Maureen, I'd like to meet you, some of you new people. And uh, it's two days before Valentine's, so we have lots of cookies and candies out there. I've got a pocket full of, you, you remember these from grade school, you know, see mine. So. And everywhere I go, I'm just seeing chocolate and cakes and cookies and red Valentine's, and I love it. I love talking about love. So our founder, fellow named Ernest Holmes, pretty smart guy, he said love is the central flame of the universe, the very fire itself. It is that which is, it just is, and it cannot be explained. The essence of love pervades everything. It fires the heart, it stimulates the emotions, it renews the soul. Words cannot express it. So. Words can't express it very well, but I'm going to try to express today. But also, no, mostly poets and musicians express it because it comes to us, I think love comes to us more from the right brain rather than the left brain. And uh, an example, one of my favorite songs, All You Need Is Love. Mm -hmm. My favorite metaphysical rock group. <laughs> but, uh, you know, there's nothing you can do that can't be done, nothing you can sing that can't be sung, pretty metaphysical. So the magic, though, of love is that it brings us into a unity, a unity with others, a unity with, with self, a unity with the divine. So to love God is to love yourself, love the divine spark within, to love each other because I look out and I see God in many amazing disguises. <laughs> I was thinking about today, all the, all the football players, amazing disguise. <laughs> but um, a couple weeks ago, I talked about metaphysical tools and different tools and love was one of them. And I said, love, love is like, well, who here has Swiss Army knife? You know, and, and it does a lot of things. It's a multi-tool. That's what love is. And I'll go on to explain it to you. But uh, I just love first, love's dictionary says it's an intense feeling of deep affection. Well, metaphysically, it's much more than that. So how do we use this tool? And how do we use it to be more intimate with the divine? So that's what I'm going to talk about. But first, I just wanted to stop and just say, um, I ask all of you to include in your prayers this week the people in Turkey and Syria. Thank you. So what do farmers do for Valentine's Day? What do they give? Lots of hogs and kisses. <laughs> <laughs> So, and you know that tingly feeling you get when you meet somebody you're really attracted to? You know what that tingly feeling is? It's your common sense leaving your body. <laughs> Seriously, love takes many forms, and I'll give you an example. You know, on Valentine's Day, women love to have chocolates and cakes and cookies and cards with little puppies and kitties, you know, and what do men do? Well, I can't generalize, but my brothers, especially my younger brothers, he's always doing this to me. I think it's a serious card and I open it up, oh. Um, it's like, roses are red, violets are blue, sugar is sweet, and so is you. Now for my brother, roses are red, violets are blue, I was born smart, what happened to you? <laughs> Oh, it, it gets worse. It gets worse. I'm 
going to keep it clean, but here's one. <laughs> Roses are red, violets are blue, onions stink, and so do you. <laughs> so, you know, love comes in many forms. I love my brother dearly, and he loves me. And he's, it's just a, a different form of love. Teasing. <laughs> Te teasing. <laughs> it's a guy humor. <laughs> but anyway. First, I want to talk about the heart, because you can't talk about love without talking about the heart. And Ernest Holmes, our founder, again said, the heart is the center of divine love and perfect circulation. The pulsations of life are steady, unceasing, perfect. Love at the center of our being, calm, continuous pulsation of life are governed by love. So your heart is a living center through which the love of God flows to bless eternally, not only in your lives, but everybody else's life. Uh, I don't know if some of you have heard of the Heart Math Institute. They do all these testing, and um, they said that the electrical field, field, you have an electrical and you have a magnetic field in your body generated by the heart. Now the electrical field is 60 times greater than the field in your brain. The, and that can be measured by an electrocardiogram. The magnetic field that your heart produces is 100 times greater than the one produced by the brain. And they measure that by something called a magnometer. And the studies they've done, They've shown that the magnetic signals generated by the heart have the capacity to affect individuals around us, especially if you're related to the other person. Uh, the nervous system acts as an antenna, and when it's tuned in, it responds to magnetic fields produced by the hearts of others. And what they're doing, they're trying to find out if this can be used for healing. When a mother is focused her attention on her baby, her brain waves synchronize to the babies. Mm -hmm. And married couples, brain waves and heart synchronize with each other. So that's a good reason to fake it until you make it. You know, there are times where you feel lousy, but you're gonna be around a group of people. Don't send out, you know, <coughs> a bad message. You don't realize you're doing it, but your heart is sending out a message. And, and it's going out, uh, they say, at least three feet in front of you that they can measure. I mean, I think you can measure, you can see somebody coming across the room, and if, if they're not in good shape, you can feel it. You can feel it in the room. So we're all interconnected. We're all one. And we also know from Ernest Holmes, he says, love is the grandest healing and drawing power on earth. Love is the sole impulse for creation. And why that is, I don't know, some of you know how to do the spiritual mind treatment, the positive affirmative prayers that we do. I call it the special sauce. You put the special sauce in there. You put the love in there, or one of her children, like um, little love, but like like happiness or like um, joy. Any of those things you put into your prayer, and it's created. It's creative. Ernest also said. He said, "Love is a vibration." He said, "As all is mind, and as we attract to us." That which we first become until we learn to love, we're not sending out love vibrations, and not until we send out those vibrations can we see we receive love in return. So send them out to the whole world, he says. Send them full of love and affection. Love everybody. There's always more good than bad in people. And another great teacher, uh, Charles Fillmore, he was the founder of the Unity Church. Charles said, if we would draw to us love, we must be love, be loving and kind, just as if we had want to have peace and harmony in our environment, 
we must establish it within ourselves. So what is love? We've heard it's a vibration, it's a creation, it's healing. <clears throat> Ralph Waldo Emerson said, although I may try to describe love, when I experience it, I am speechless. Although I may try to write about love, I am rendered helpless. My pen breaks, the paper slips away at the ineffable place where lover, loving, and loved are one. Every moment is made glorious by the light of love. And Ralph Waldo Emerson, he was um, uh, known for uh, leading transcendentalism, transcendentalism in the United States, and he went to Harvard at the age of 14, wow. the youngest, the youngest wow. in his class. <coughs> and do you remember that guy named Shakespeare? <laughs> he said, did my heart love till now? Forswear at sight, for I ne'er saw true beauty till this night. The more I give to thee, the more I have, for both are infinite. Love is infinite, but soft. What light through yonder window breaks? It is the east, and Juliet is the sun. So, love is the sun, love is a flame. And Albert Einstein, when asked what love is, he said, love is gravity. <laughs> of course, because it makes some people feel attracted to others. <laughs> but he says, it's power. It multiplies the best we have, and it allows humanity not to be extinguished in their blind selfishness. For love, we live and die. So a little bit about my love story. I met Robert, August 1971, and he had long hair. <laughs> and he had come back from Vietnam, he was wearing his army jacket. And uh, first day of school. But uh, later, when we graduated, we went our separate ways. I went to Oregon, and he stayed in the Bay Area in Virginia for a while. And um, several years passed. We saw each other once during like a 20 year period. And um, I decided to go to the reunion. And I saw him across the room. And it was like, you know, it was like the old flame was still there. <laughs> and you know that song, I Want to Hold Your Hand? She was just 17, you know what I mean? The way she looked. <laughs> with another when I saw him standing there and my heart went boom when I crossed that room <laughs> and I held your hand in mine how could I dance with another <laughs> so here we are still together thank you So how do we how do we create more love in our life? Well, spirit can do for us only what we do for ourselves. I hope I'm saying that correctly. Spirit can do for us only what it can do through us. So what we have to do is remove any blocks. And that's why we have a workshop. We've got to remove blocks to love. Some of us are better giving love than receiving love. You have to be able to receive love in order to give love. So, Ernest Holmes said, unless we're able to provide consciousness of love, it cannot make the gift, meaning spirit cannot give it to you. What we need is not some greater power, but a greater consciousness, a deeper realization of life, a more sublime concept of being a more intimate concept of the indwelling God. He says, spiritual evolution, as we evolve, makes the infinite not more distant, but more intimate. So how can you do that? What can you do? You, you know, we talk about our spiritual practices all the time, meditation, prayer, journaling, chanting, 
listening to music, whatever uh, you feel expands your consciousness. And I call it getting into the flow. You know, you get into the flow of spirit. And Ernest says, always expect the good. Have enthusiasm. Have a consciousness of love, a radiant feeling flowing through you at all times. And treat yourself, meaning keep praying until you have an inner sense of unity. He says, I love this, he says, the one praying sets in motion the law of love, which is a fundamental law of the universe. Love. All you need is love. <laughs> And Rumi is the one who said, your task is not to seek for love, but to seek and find all the barriers. And you know who said love is the right answer? It was actually Albert Einstein. He said, love is the right answer to any question, any problem. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so example, how can you use love? It's cold in here. <coughs> Sorry. Um, I can hear it work. Your co-worker is saying, well, I don't want to do it this way. I don't think it's going to work. And you're, you're arguing. And so you stop and go, oh, wait a minute. Where's my multi-tool? Where's that Swiss Army knife <laughs> called love? Well, you could do a couple things. You could say, step out of your argumentative side and say, well, I understand. Uh, I think I can see what you're saying. I think I hear what you're saying, you know. Um, I'll take a look at it. You know, you've had a lot of good ideas in the past, you know, giving the person respect. You've had a lot of good ideas in the past. I'll look at it. I'll, I'll think about it and see what we can do. That's called collaboration. That's how to use your love tool. Another situation, you know, a friend of mine wanted me to go shopping with her, so we went shopping and she picked out this blouse you know, my opinion was, um, you know, it, it did not add to her magnificence. But I, 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 okay, stop, stand over here, pull out the tool, and I said, do you love this blouse? Yes, she loved it. Do you have other things that will match it? Yes. Uh, does this remind you of something? My mother? <sighs> okay, don't share opinion. <laughs> but it's not one of love. That's how we expand. You know, love and joy are in our relations. And so the greater our love for God, the greater our love for others, and our greater our capacity. This is part of evolution in religious science we call it involution and evolution evolution is that point at which we are uh, basically growing or growing and evolving a couple other things you could do um, like i said earlier you can practice seeing god in everybody even the people with tattoos you know and <laughs> Sorry, my daughter has tattoos. And practicing people, you know, God in football players and everybody. And you can practice speaking the language of love. Those were two examples I gave you. That's the language. And you can also go to the mirror every morning and say, Hi, I love you. <laughs> you know, just look in that mirror. Just say, I love you. So what is love? Love. Love is so much and so much more. Um, as Ernest Holmes said, it was the central flame. It's a self-givingness. It's gravity. It's God. It's consciousness. It's a healing vibration. Love is all there is. Love is all there is. Love just is. So I'd like you to say with me, through the light of God, of God's love, through the light of God's love, I recognize the oneness of all. I recognize the oneness of all. And so it is. And so it is. Thank you, Reverend. Thank you. Well, let's get serious for a minute here. <laughs> After all, it's Super Bowl Sunday. Love is a choice. In fact, at every 
waking moment of life, we are at choice. We can choose one path or the other. And that's what this song is about. It's about choosing love. There's times it's pretty easy to choose the other path. Well, let's, let's keep in mind that we are always at choice. This is a song called simply, I Choose Love.
has a video on that, um, beautiful with his artwork and everything. So just Google I Choose Love and you'll find it on YouTube. Mm -hmm. All right. Thank you, Yay. thank you. And I just wanted to mention they have some tapes out on the some the CDs. CDs. <laughs> Does anybody have a tape player, Lori? <laughs> <laughs> or does anybody even have a CD player anymore? <laughs> so, uh, thank you, thank you. This is our time for conscious giving. So, uh, um, if you want to take, yes, if you want to take your gift, and there are many ways to give. We have many ways of giving today and online, sending in a check. And your gifts are greatly appreciated. You keep us in this beautiful location. Thank you. So take your gift and put it over your heart and just say with me, Divine Love. Blesses and multiplies. All that I am. All that I have. And all that I circulate. And all that I circulate. And for this I give great thanks. So it is. And please sing with us, I am so blessed. I am so blessed. So blessed. one power and one presence in our lives. There's only the one, one life, God's life, right here in this moment. So I speak my word for everyone here when I say that I am one with this power, I am one with this love. I am loved, I am lovable, and I am loving, and I accept, I accept this love, the creative, power of the universe. I accept it in my heart. I accept the flame of life, the light of love, and I keep my light burning. I am one with the presence, and I act knowing each person I meet is also God in an amazing disguise. So I am open. I am open for love. I'm grateful for love. So I know this is so. I give great thanks. I release my word. I let God, I let go. Together we say, yes. so, yes. Yes. so please stand and we'll have our closing song. Words you hear. Open your heart.
Yeah. 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 Yeah.